Welcome to Life Giving Network. Life Giving Network is all about training pastors all over the world how to grow healthy churches that love the lost people to Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Ken Wanyonyi of Christ the King Community Church and I am a master trainer of Life Giving Network, Nairobi, Kenya. We continue with our topic, uh, God's Wisdom for Marriage. God's Wisdom for Marriage. And welcome to session number two of God's Wisdom for Marriage. Today we are talking about how to build a marriage and a family that God blesses. How to build a marriage and a family that God blesses. How to build a marriage and a family that God blesses. You know we've been talking about we, our mission as Life Giving Network is to train pastors how to grow healthy judges that love the lost people to Jesus Christ. There is no way you can you can build you can you can grow a healthy church that loves the lost people to Jesus Christ if your own marriage is not healthy. If you've not worked on growing your own marriage to be healthy. And so session number two under uh, God's wisdom for marriage is how to build a marriage and a family that God blesses. Number one. Marry God's best mate for you. Marry God's best mate for you. A biblical example is Isaac and Rebecca in the book of Genesis chapter 24. God sovereignly made it all happen. However, when you look at the difficulty of their son Jacob, you can understand it doesn't always work out as clearly and magically as it did for Isaac and Rebecca. There are cultural considerations here when it comes uh, to who selects a spouse and how. While the cultural examples we see in the Bible uh, lean more to what arranged marriages than love marriages, the Bible doesn't really explicitly, explicitly teach one way or the other. And today, both have many wonderful examples of success. It's not for us to advocate for one type of marriage over the other. But in every case, three things should be kept in mind. In all the cases, it's not for us uh, to advocate for one type of marriage over the other. But in every case, three things should be kept in mind. Number one, the couple, not the extended family members, have to live with each other for a long life, gi giving them some agency, some free will, or a power of choice in the selection of their long life partners, respects their dignity and liberty. Number two, it's wise to consult with elders and parents in selection of a spouse. Even if you are in love, and even if you feel like you have heard from God, it is wise to listen to the counsel of others who have your best interest in heart. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Proverbs 11, verse 4. And Proverbs 28, verse 26. There are many examples of the Holy Spirit speaking uh, supernaturally to the question of whom to marry. Having said that, discerning the will of God about this question, whom to marry, is one of the hardest things to do clearly. Because every cell in your body, every hormone, and aspect of your being has a vested interest 
in the result of the prayer. We feel it is best that everyone should be involved in their decision. Yeah. One note about love and being in love. This phenomena where you get butterflies in your stomach and develop an irrational positive feeling about someone like they can do nothing wrong and your life will only feel complete if you are with them is often portrayed in movies and songs as being in love but it is better understood as in infatuation the bible teaches that love is an action not a feeling in the book of john 15 verse 13 the feeling is great it's part of god's plan to help newly words are just to live together but even that feeling like all feelings is fleeting and doesn't last if we base our decisions to marry someone on an overwhelmingly positive heart feeling about them when that feeling dulls or goes away or is replaced by annoyance or frustration or disappointment then that can put marriages in jeopardy since the bible teaches us that god hates divorce like we see in the book of malachi chapter 2 verse 16 our marriages should be based on lifelong commitment and the acts of love not merely the temporal and admirably powerful feeling which is glamorized in movies remember we are talking about uh, how to build a marriage and a family that god blesses we are talking about how to build a marriage and a family that god blesses and point number one we've talked about marry god's best mate for you number two obey god's design for mutually satisfying marriage obey god's design for a mutually satisfying marriage under that point we are going to look at several things number one fidelity you shall not commit adultery exodus chapter 20 verse 14 adultery is prohibited in ten commandments and throughout the scriptures we can see the serious consequences of adultery in david's life second samuel chapter 11 and we know that jesus took the old covenant teaching on adultery one step further by saying if you look at a woman with lust in your heart you have already committed adultery with her matthew chapter 5 verse 28 to 29 your spouse need to know they can trust you and that you are fully committed to them as your family your spouse need to know they can trust you and that they are fully committed to them and that you are fully committed to them and to your family number two mutual submission submit to one another out of reverence for christ ephesians 5:21 this verse is the last part of general uh, admonition of the world church not just couple he summarizes what it means to walk wise 
with the idea of mutual submission to one another. This is walking the path of humility. Why and how? The answer is both of these in the same. In the reverence for Christ. If you are really a committed devotee of Christ, you should choose daily to submit yourself to the highest and most loving outcome of your loved ones. And that starts with your attitude towards your spouse. That starts with your attitude towards your spouse. Number three, genuine respect and cooperation. Genuine respect and cooperation. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is a body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. I mean in everything. Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. After verse 21. Which is about mutual submission. The last 12 verses in this chapter need to be understood together. Paul commands wives to submit to their husbands as to the Lord. This might seem old-fashioned or, or patriarchal, but when understood in the context of what came before, verse 21, and what comes after, Eight verses on how sacrificial, sacrificially husbands should love their wives. It becomes easier to digest. Respect is something that men and husbands crave. They may not say it or even be aware of it. But the admiration, appreciation and approval of their wife is something important to husband. I will repeat that. It is powerful. Husbands may not say it or even be aware of it, but the admiration, the appreciation, and approval of their wife is something important to every husband. Number four, sacrificial love and acceptance. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for, for, for her. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And to present her to, to himself as a, a radiant church without stain or wrinkles or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. In this same way, in this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife he who loves his wife loves himself. <laughs> loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Ephesians 5, 25 to that one. These verses set a very high standard for husbands in a godly biblical marriage. These verses set a very high standard for husbands in a godly biblical marriage. Loving your wife 
in this context isn't about mere emotions. Loving your wife in this context isn't about mere emotion. It's a, a willful act. It is a decision. Love is a verb. You do something to show you are love. You do something to show you love them. Talk is cheap. What do we do? Well, we are supposed to love our lives as Christ, our wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This doesn't mean death on the cross, but completely unselfish difference. Putting their needs, their desires, they are best first and foremost in our lives, even at cost and inconvenience to ourselves. Yeah, Colossians 3.19 repeats the command to love our wives and adds, and do not be harsh with them. Do not be harsh with them. Lastly, on that point, remember we are talking about session number two, how to build a marriage and family that God bless. How to build a marriage and a family that God blesses. And point number one well, under that top, uh, 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 under in that session was marry God's best mate for you. And number two, obey God's design for a mutual satisfying marriage. And we've been under that point number two, obeying God's design for a mutual satisfying marriage. We are we have looked at fidelity, mutual submission. Number two, number three, genuine respect and and, and cooperation. Number four, sacrificial love and acceptance and now number five mutual feeding and care mutual feeding and care this is a profound mystery but i am talking about christ and the church however each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband ephesians chapter 2 chapter 5 verse 32 since a marriage is a partnership. Yeah? Since a marriage is a partnership, we need to care for and help one another. We need to care for and help one another. If one is sick, the other picks up the, 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 the slack and pitches in more. In the ebb and flow, of our marriages relationship it's helpful to understand the emotional bank account that brings me to the end of session number two of god's wisdom for marriage next time in session number three we will be looking at five love languages in a marriage five love languages in a marriage Thank you so much for listening. Good morning and have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you.